And joining us on the Rothman Orthopedics guest line, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just right to the introduction. One of my favorite people on the planet, Serena Winters, joins us right here, host of the Locked On Sixers podcast. Uh, it's absolutely incredible, Serena. First off, welcome back to the Sixers community and covering the Sixers, and it's just so damn good to see you. How are you, Marzetta? It is so good to see you. I mean, as you know, covering Philly sports, it, you just miss it, right? It's like. You love serving the fans because they love it so much. And so for me, it's just, that's what I like to do. That's what I like to do. So it's easy for me. But it's so good to hear your voice. I mean, you have a unique one, right? And so I, <laughs> you're laughing at that. I do. I do. So uh, it's good to hear you. Uh, thank you so much. I, I saw this come across uh, just last week. And here I am. I'm like, oh, my God, Serena, this is amazing. Yes. Uh, you, you announced the personal news. There's the tweet right there. Whole video attached to it. People can check you out five days a week, talking Sixers, locked on Sixers, locked on 76ers podcast, uh, and people can enjoy your commentary on the Sixers yet again. Uh, how did all this come together? You know, you have to be thrilled to be talking Sixers basketball again. I just miss the Sixers fans. I mean, to be honest with you, I loved talking Sixers basketball, and I wasn't doing that on a daily basis anymore. I was still watching all of the games, still keeping in touch with all of my colleagues that cover the Sixers, still keeping in touch with my friends over at the Sixers. You know, I still had the same sources, all of that. So for me, it just came together with someone reached out and I said, why not? You know, why not talk about the Sixers all day, every day, five days a week? That's 30 <laughs> minutes and a lot of my voice, Mark Farsman. A lot of my voice. If there's anything about you and I, it's that we're obviously just complete narcissists and just love Seriously. ourselves. <laughs> Seriously. Except I will say, like, I'm looking at the clock and I got to make sure that I'm done by the 30 minute mark because I can't stand hearing myself talk anymore. <laughs> I'm just thankful that I have listeners that actually want to listen to what I have to say because mm -hmm. halfway through, Sometimes I'm just like, come on, come on. I got to have a guest on here because I can't take the sound of my own voice, you know? Well, you know, I, yeah, I believe you. I absolutely, I, I can, I can relate. Um, <laughs> when, it, when it, when it comes to, because you've already done your first handful of shows, which have been great. Yes. I caught some of them. They're fantastic. How are you enjoying that interaction and, and, you know, getting the feedback from fans and everything? It's so much fun. I think my favorite part is. I can't believe how much interaction that I'm getting from listeners who will, especially on Instagram, you know, I'll put something up, whether it's something for a mailbag or ask a question and hundreds of people respond wanting to know something. And for me, that part of it is the part that's most fun. Like there's some things in the show that I've talked about that I wouldn't have necessarily talked about had a fan not asked. Um, someone had asked a great question to me of, you know, realistically, as an example, what does realistically for a timeline of a Ben Simmons trade, like what does that look like? And so then I went in and broke down the numbers of, well, this is what happens December 15th. There's only this amount of guys that are available to be traded. Then you've got January 15th, this amount of guys. You have guys in the Sixers roster that can't be traded until X date and X date, you know, stuff that listeners asked about. And then I was able to, you know, talk to the fans about and it ended up being something people were really interested in so mm. to me that's the fun part is that you have the control over what the content is so i can reach out and ask sixers fans what they want to know and try to find out those answers for them that's awesome uh i, I you know it's funny i wasn't even going to start with simmons i know everyone wants us to start simmons but like start with that conversation i was gonna ask you about tyrese maxi i'll yes. leave it up to you a guest choice guest choice you want to talk about Maxi first, or do you want to talk about the, that whole Ben Simmons fiasco? Oh, come on. Let's talk Maxi because the okay. best part about the Ben Simmons fiasco is what we've seen mm. with Tyrese Maxi, right? True. I mean, we would not be seeing this growth with Tyrese if this hadn't been going on with Ben. And it's actually fascinating, Mark, because I don't know if everybody knows, but Tyrese Maxi and Ben Simmons, they had the same agent, mm -hmm. right? They both are represented by Rich Paul. So it's really interesting that although you had this with Ben Simmons going on, you've still got a Rich Paul client playing for the Sixers and playing his butt off. I mean, it's just so much fun to watch. This kid, man, I mean, what, over 17 points a game right now, over four assists. And for me, it's also, he's not turning the ball over like I would expect for such a young guy. Mm -hmm. But more than anything else, how much fun is it to watch him out there? And I think that that's why, look, Sixers fans to me are easy to please. You work hard. You put your heart on the floor. 
and they're going to love you. And that's what you see with Maxi out there. There are so many guys in this league that shy away from contact. We know those guys. Players in the league know those guys. They have it on the scouting report. Maxi is the opposite of one of those guys. <laughs> it's like he is a magnet to the contact. And he is just not scared of anything out there. And he has so much room to grow. I mean, I am talking about him like this, and he can still be so much better. Defensively, you know, we've seen some defensive lapses from him, whether that's reads, whether that's just scouting report stuff, miscommunications. But again, that goes back to his age and his youth. And right now he's offensively, he's so fun to watch. And he's always obviously on the ball. But if the Sixers, if there's a trade and we see Maxi playing more off ball as an example, you know, then we'll get to see him maybe be better at catch and shoot, right? Whereas right now mm -hmm. he's always got the ball in his hand. So I say all that with there's still much, so much room for him to grow. And he has been, for me, the bright spot of the season and really the bright spot of the Ben Simmons saga because we wouldn't get to see this out of him otherwise. Mm -hmm. well, I think, what was it, game six of the uh, NBA Eastern Conference semifinals where he goes out there and just goes off, has that great yes! game. And yes! now we're getting basically to see that again and again every single night, especially with Joel Embiid being out, Tobias Harris missing time, Matisse Thibel missing time, Danny Green missing time, Seth Curry missing time. And then, you know, you got all of a sudden uh, Tyrese Maxey is taking over this team. 100%. I love that you brought up last year because I remember that game like it was yesterday. And that was exactly it. Like you're listening to the announcers talk about Maxi, how this kid's the real deal, but then you don't know how he's going to come back next year. Sometimes guys just have those games, mm -hmm. right? Sometimes guys just have those. Maxi isn't one of the guys who's just having one of those games. I mean, that kid put back to back. 30 plus points up the other night. I mean, come on. Rest, and then he came rest out my slacking case. and put up like 22 or 24 the next. <laughs> come on now, slacker. Yeah. yeah. You know? <laughs> he was making me sweat. It was the second time I bet his over. And then he was making me sweat that oh. time. But eh, we're good. No, we got it. We got 17 and a half. All good. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I'm really impressed with him. And now there's this whole other side to it, which is the unfortunate situation with Ben Simmons. Let me, I'm just going to ask you a very general question How does it end, Serena? How does it end? Does it end with him playing another game for the Sixers or a handful of them? Or does it just end with him getting traded and never playing for the Sixers again? My best guess is, and if I was a betting woman, right? Like, I just cannot see how he plays another game for the Sixers organization. Mm -hmm. I cannot see it. And how it plays out. I mean, obviously, Daryl Morey came out showed his cards, put it all out there, what he wants. He doesn't want a role player. He wants, you know, an all-star type, franchise type player for Ben Simmons. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if he's going to get that. I think this, I think if it gets traded, it goes to at least January. Yeah, I, I, I say the same thing. It's going to drag on. It's going to drag. drag on. It's going to drag. And so we're going to be talking about this a lot. And I know it's, you know, the last thing we want to talk about every day, but I don't <laughs> see is this, I don't see this as something that's going to be fixed right away. Mm -hmm. I think we've still got a while. I do not think that he plays another game for the Sixers organization. And it was interesting because the other day, Sham Sharania, who really, I should have just like a segment on our Locked On Sixers podcast. That's just like Sham Sharania segment update on Ben Simmons because that's <laughs> basically, you know, where we get all of our news these days. Right. But he came out and said that Rich Paul told him that even if Ben Simmons gets traded to another team, that he's not going to play right away. Mm. So then you're hearing that and then you're kind of thinking to yourself, well, and whether or not that's true, who knows, right? It's an agent playing an agent game. Right. But if it is, and maybe he's just trying to mess with the Sixers some way, I don't know. But that decreases his trade value, doesn't it? Uh, absolutely, it does. And, and, and so if I'm a team that's going to be trading for Ben Simmons, and now you've got the agent coming out and saying, well, he's still not going to be mentally ready to play for that team, even if he gets traded, that's got to decrease his trade mm -hmm. value, right? Yeah, absolutely. 
Uh, because especially if that's only furthering the idea that he's not mentally ready to play the game of basketball. Why, why would I give you top dollar? Why? Like, the, like I think Rich Paul has really screwed this whole thing up so bad. I think Ben Simmons has screwed this thing up so bad where it's made it next to impossible to trade. If there was mental health issues and I don't want to go down that Avenue of questioning it, but if that was the case, where's that story in August? Instead of having all these other stories leak out about how he just wants to trade, he doesn't want to play with Joel Embiid, he doesn't want to face the Philadelphia fans, it's not up to him to fix his trade value. All those stories that were leaking out for a month and a half, none of them had to do with mental health. If if that was something that they were going to, I don't want to say use, but at least put out there, why did they wait so late to do it? That's what seems so odd to me when it surrounds Ben Simmons in the way, and Rich Paul, the way that it has. Yeah, I think for me, the weird part is regarding the mental health aspect is like, I take mental health very seriously. It is something that I have in my family very seriously. I have family members that have mental health disorders. And so I have a lot of experience with it. And I think what is disheartening to me about this particular situation is really how much focus there has been on the money aspect, because we're talking about mental health here. Mm -hmm. And if someone is really, really struggling, if someone really has a mental health disorder or a disability and is really, really struggling, I would think that the last thing that should be on your mind is getting fined for not being at practice Mm -hmm. or a game or whatever the case is. And there has been so much money or so much attention now put on this money aspect that to me, it then takes away from the forward prog- progress that we have made as a society in being more aware of mental health issues, mm-hmm. right? Instead, you know, we're reading reports about Simmons being in the back of a film session and him getting, you know, a basically a schedule of where he should be that day. You know, if he doesn't want to get fined, so then he shows up in the back of the film session. Well, if you're just showing up Mm -hmm. not to get fined, I mean, to me, it's like at this point, who cares about that? If you are really, really struggling, who cares? And by the way, you'll get your money back because the NBA players association, they're going to go to bat for you if that's the case. Right. Mm -hmm. So why, why is that what we're talking about? And I think for me, Mark, that's what gets me. Mm-hmm. Understood. Understood. Um, how good are the Sixers without Ben Simmons? Like, let's say Joel Embiid comes back, Matisse Thibel, and everyone's healthy and all that stuff. What are the real ex- realistic expectations for this 76ers 2021-2022 season? If there's no trade for Ben Simmons and he's just... If there's no trade uh, or let's say you get back not even an all-star player, but somebody that's like an, an, a, a Tobias Harris level player. Second round of the playoffs, something like that, mm. I'd say. I mean, look, this team is still really good. Yeah. If you've got a healthy Joel Embiid, this team is still really, really good. So they're going to make it to the playoffs. Um, but if you can't get something back for Ben Simmons this year, it would be hard for me to say they'd go that far right. to a place where – they want to be. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I, I could still see him going to the second round. Um, I could too. I could, I could see them taking a, a first round series. Uh, absolutely. Um, I do want to ask you about another newcomer real quick. Cause I, I know we're short on time, but uh, you mentioned you just could come to Philadelphia and you work your ass off and people will love you. Um, I'm not afraid to say it. I know it's early on in our relationship, but George and Yang, I love you. I, I'm not <laughs> afraid to say it. I, I feel like it's totally fine. I can admit that. I freaking love this guy. George Yang, man, gets on the floor, gets dirty, yells at officials, hits threes, embraces the crowd. I was at that game uh, where they played the Bucks. George Yang is telling me to get off my feet. And guess what? You're damn right I got off my feet because George Yang told me to. I'm loving what he's bringing to the table here in Philadelphia. Well, and you're a family man, right? So wait, do you drive a minivan now? I don't drive. No? I do drive an SUV, but I do not drive a minivan, no. Okay, well, when that uh, that next kid comes, yeah. I'm calling you up, and I think you're going to trade him the SUV for a minivan, and then you're really going to be on the George Yang train. Yeah, right. Uh, you know, just yeah, rolling up. Uh, it, and it's not even like the Jimmy Butler minivan. You know what I'm saying? It's no. not even like a cool minivan. No. What do you but, what do you think the, the brand of the minivan would be? 
For for me? Yeah. I was a Nissan Quest guy growing okay. up. We had a Nissan Quest, Joe Farzetta, Allener. They uh they had a nice Nissan Quest for my brother Michael and I. So uh, that's what we rocked. And we were I remember we were so blown away when my parents bought the minivan because we could control the radio in the back. I remember there was a headphone jack and there was buttons where you could change the radio station. And my brother and I would fight over that like cats and dogs. Uh, and then you could fold down the one seat and have a table for your McDonald's meal. So there Perfect. you go. That's, that's a you, yeah, Nissan Quest. Yeah. Tell your guys to get on the next ad sponsors. You know, you got to find maybe a Nissan spot, someone with a minivan, you get them <laughs> in a van, and then you talk about George Diang all day. Because there like we- you said, that guy just gets the city of Philadelphia. He just does. Mm-hmm. And he also just happens to be averaging 12 points a game, which is almost double what he was averaging in Utah. And I mean, look, yes, he's been inconsistent. Like mm-hmm. he has, right? He'll have a game where he makes five threes in the next game. He makes one in the next game. He goes over, you know, so over a couple games, he might be one for seven. But he's like a frick on cork moss mm-hmm. in that he's not afraid to pull the trigger. And if you drop a play for him, he's going to shoot and he's going to go on heaters. So, I mean, Philly is going to love the guy. They already do. So what else can I say about him? How can you not love the guy? I might use the word smitten. I might use the word smitten. Well, you Um, look smitten right now. You're (laughs) blushing too. These are just my natural cheeks. Um, uh, This is the last thing I want to run by. I'm just going to throw you a couple of names. Just excitement level if this is what you end up getting back in return for Ben Simmons. Dame Lillard. Yeah. Yeah, right? Okay, that's Mm -hmm. the easy one. That's the easy one. All right, let's go with his teammate. Let's go with his teammate, Lehigh kid, CJ McCollum. At this point, I'm okay with it. Okay. Yeah. I'm right around there as well. I'm right around there. Uh, One of the latest names, one of the latest names has come about in all this, uh, Jalen Brown. Okay. There's no way. There's no way they're getting Jalen Brown. But let's live in this hypothetical. So so first of all, I, yes. Okay. I'm yes. Absolutely. Yeah. You're getting shooting back for that. He, I mean, yes, but they're not getting him. Uh (laughs) The, the, we're excited, but we're, not, we're never going to When they get them, you're going to replay this on repeat, just over <laughs> yeah. and over. They're not getting them. They're not yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Serena Winters. Yeah, listen yeah. to that Locked On 76ers what podcast. Yeah, what is oh, that goodness. lady? Come on. Uh, <laughs> in all seriousness, Serena, so amazing catching up with you again. Seriously, you know how much I, you know how much I miss you. You do a fantastic job. The podcast is a absolute – I was going to say a home run. Forget it. It's a quadruple double. That's what it is. All right. <laughs> People can check it out. Make sure you guys check it out. Follow Serena on uh, on Twitter and make sure you guys check out and get this podcast locked on Sixers podcast right there. Locked on network. You guys can check it out. Follow Serena winners. Very simple. At Serena winners pretty on a uh, pretty. It's just like that. Just like yeah. at Mark Farzetta. At Serena like winners. Bada boom, bada bang. Simple we, do. we got it. Serena winners, ladies and gentlemen, check her out. Locked on 76ers podcast. Serena, thank you so much for joining me on the Rothman Orthopedics guest line. Love it. Love Mark. Love the Farzi show. Love the Sixers fans. Great being on.